Hello, I'm Elizabeth Luard. Welcome to Slovakia. The Slavs still value their oral tradition, and it's the business of the senior matrons to guide and educate the young with singing and play acting as the main medium of instruction. Today is a joyful event in Krasna Luka, the official welcoming of a new baby to the community. The ceremony is led by the senior matron, Monica. We're expecting the neighbors, who are due to bring symbolic gifts, the birth baskets. The visitors will expect to be rewarded with sweet things, pierogi, little stuffed dumplings. The dough is made with flour and eggs, just the same as a fresh pasta. A rough guide is twice the weight of flour to egg. That's about four ounces of flour and a pinch of salt to each egg. The pierogi are stuffed with three different fillings. Fresh curd cheese, sweetened a little. Plum jam, stewed down without sugar till it's thick and black. And a mixture of the jam and the curd. For this job, you need very neat fingers, well schooled. The pierogi go into a pan of boiling water for about three minutes. Then Monica drains them and pours cold water through to stop the dumplings sticking. The pastry board's brilliant. You just take it around with you. I bought one which doubles as my drawing board. Now for the pies. We're making one with sauerkraut and one with poppy seeds. For the pastry, we have one kilo of flour, one egg, a pint of milk, two ounces of yeast to make enough pastry for one kilo of sauerkraut. It has to be worked by hand for 25 minutes. It's a very wet dough. You can see the yeast working already. The ceremony provides an opportunity for the young wives to learn traditional cooking skills. Bread must always be blessed. The dough has to rise for an hour in the warmth over the stove. Now we're ready to finish off. Monica's helper, Tereska, is to be married next spring, so the lessons will come in handy. Two thirds for the savory, one for the sweet. The savory pie takes one kilo of sauerkraut to one kilo of dough. The sweet pie is stuffed with plenty of poppy seeds grown in the back garden. Four ounces mixed with the same weight of sugar is enough to stuff half a kilo of dough. And it's rolled up to make a strudel. 
This is the classic party cake all over Eastern Europe. Monica will be ready to bake in 10 minutes. Both the pie and the strudel need a hot oven for three quarters of an hour to one hour. There it is, sweet and sour, a reminder of life's ups and downs. The midwife arrives first. Her gift is sleep and safety. The baby's mother watches with pride. Buns filled with jam for happiness. And there's red bean soup for strength. Flour and eggs, so the larder is always well stocked. Everyone spits in the cradle for health or luck or future fertility or maybe a mixture of all three. Chicken for feast days. And that's sauerkraut pie for daily dinner. The new mother has more important matters to attend to. Men and boys have a gift for the baby, a special tune. It all leads to the same conclusion. Life is not a rehearsal. The show must go on and spring plowing waits for no one. Potatoes are a fine first crop when you've just ploughed a new meadow. All the family turns out. You need all hands. When you're little, you love to help the grown-ups. And when you finish the day helping to plant and sow in the fields, there's something special to be found in the town. You'd never guess it in a thousand years, but in a garage beneath this concrete suburb of Banska Bistrica, Anton Anderle has created a fairyland as captivating as anything Alice found in Wonderland. Hello, hello, 
The hero Punch, Gasparko, is the direct descendant of the wise King Caspar, the dark-skinned one, who got all the jokes in the nativity plays. Hansi Paprika is the joker. The Paprika-eating Hungarians are the Slovaks' next-door neighbors and sometime overlords. So they're fair game. Some stories are old, some new, but all have an underlying theme, the triumph of life over death, of good over evil. Here's the devil. Here's one cloven hoof and one human foot. These are not so much puppets, but more a troop of actors whose characteristics, hero, heroine, joker, villain, are familiar to their audience, but who act their parts in different plays. We're in Rukovini near the Polish border, and I've the good luck to be invited to a real wedding. Marcella is being prepared for her big day. Everyone here still wears traditional costume for celebrations. It solves a few sartorial problems. Not even the bride's mother can say I haven't a thing to wear. Once again, it's the senior matron who leads the rites of passage. It's her responsibility to instruct the young bride through the medium of the old songs and dances in her duties and obligations. The maiden can wear her hair down in a long braid. The matron must wear her hair up. The game here is to guess which is the real bride. There's an element, too, of an older preoccupation, the need to chase away and outwit malevolent spirits at this vulnerable time. It's a ritual which probably has its roots in the skirmishes of rival tribesmen, when kidnapping brides from among your neighbors was acceptable social behavior. <coughs> Marcella and Joseph make their peace and take their vows in front of their parents. Only three of them, because the groom's mother is a widow. Marcella 
Alebo plánim po myšlienkom. Ja ti odpúšťam, aj po môj nej ti odpúšťam. time for the official ceremony in the registry office. But before that, preparing the wedding food is a communal effort. Everyone gets busy with their own speciality, and I get to check out the flavors. Pancakes are essential. This is a soft dough made with flour, eggs, and milk, rolled out and smacked straight on the top heat, a kind of sweetened, unleavened bread. There's going to be a choice of noodles, square, matchstick, and diamond. No need for fancy cutters, just skill with a knife. We are to have plenty of sweet things to mark a festival of joy. The noodles are dressed according to shape, sugar and cinnamon, poppy seed with sugar, and butter. Curd cheese, finished with butter. Mmm, delicious. This is the wedding soup. Lamb, potatoes, onions and garlic. And plenty of paprika to fortify the young couple for their wedding night. Donuts, made with fine white flour and the best ingredients. Traditionally, they're fried in lard, light as a feather. No feast is complete without them. Small cakes or cakes cut in small pieces are a symbol of fertility, which is why you get wedding cake to take home. At the registry office, the groom's friends bar the way to demand tribute from the bridal party. Money must change hands. In the old days, the price of a bride was her weirgeld, her ransom value if she was kidnapped. The church did not approve of these reminders of pagan times whereas the state has managed to accommodate them.
It's almost time for the party and celebrations, but first the young couple have to visit the churchyard to pay their respects to the groom's father. The approval of your ancestors is important, and a father can cast a benevolent eye even from beyond the grave. The party is held in a communal house. Neutral territory is the traditional venue for weddings. Back here, we're all waiting for the wedding guests. Rich food, and plenty of it, is the stuff of festivals. We're cooking the dumplings, just the same as for the birth basket. The festivals of birth and marriage share the same menu. It's interesting that you never have green vegetables at a wedding. It's considered unlucky. The bridegroom gets a shave. No beardless boy without responsibilities. He's now ready to take on the duties of matrimony. A shower of water to fertilize the marriage bed. That, after all, is the whole purpose of the event. And the bride accepts the obligations of wedding. Here comes the farrier to nail on the horseshoes. No more light feet in the spring grass. This will set the cause of women's lib back a few years. which mix up all the guests, 
underline the necessity for the young people to emulate the bridal pair and get on with the mating game. 20th century technology, hard to come by in Slovakia, captures thousand-year-old customs. Golden memories may fade, but in Slovakia, a Polaroid is gold dust forever. <laughs>